Okay, I think we can go ahead and get started. Good morning and good afternoon, everyone. My name is Michelle Anderson, and I am an account manager here at DM Technologies. Joining us to present Right Facts Archiving Made Easy with M Files is Robin Dixon, Channel Manager at M Files, and Joshua Butcher, Technical Engineer at DM. Just a few housekeeping items before we get started. The call is being recorded, so all lines have been muted. You can post your questions at any time in the questions section of the GoToWebinar control panel, and we'll get to as many questions as we can at the end. For those who we're not able to get to, we'll go ahead and follow up with you um, offline after the webinar. We're also going to post a recording of this webinar to our YouTube channel at www.youtube.com forward slash all things facts. Before we begin, I would like to tell you a little bit about DM for those of you who are unfamiliar with us. DM Technologies was founded in 1990 in Richardson, Texas. We soon became one of the first value-add resellers chosen by Right Facts. Since then, we've become trained and certified to scope, quote, source, install, train, and directly support Right Facts, which makes us one of nine open text platinum partners and authorized support providers. This allows us access to the open text technical support and development teams as well. Our solutions offerings include all things facts, so open text right facts and cloud facts solutions, along with advanced document capture, document management and workflow, secure mail, and managed file transfer. We're a solutions provider with M files offering on-premise, hybrid, and cloud document management and workflow solutions. Robin Dixon of M Files, as I mentioned earlier, joins us from M Files to talk about information and document management using M Files and how it easily integrates with Right Facts for fax retention and archive out of the box. I'll then hand it over to Joshua, who will provide us with a live demonstration. The M Files approach to managing information is, is by what's stored, not where it's stored. So this means that locating your fax records and their history will be as easy as using the Google search bar, which we're all familiar with using every day. So at this time, I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to Robin to get started. Robin, over to you. Excellent. Thank you so much. Let's go to our presentation. All right. Hopefully everybody can see my screen. So, Write Facts, Archiving Made Easy with M Files. So, with our integration with Write Facts, you can easily store, automate retention policies, and create a compliant audit trail. So, today we have an information overload. So, think about this. 90% of the data in the world today was created within the past two years. It's kind of overwhelming to think about that since companies have been in business 20, 40, 60 years, but 90% has been created in the last two years. So what's going on? We have all these information silos. Um, companies are challenged with managing multiple content providers that are spread across many information silos and platforms. So you might have SharePoint, you might have Oracle. Right in there, we have Right Facts, which we're concerned about for this webinar today. You might have a folder structure, salesforce.com, and it's hard to get all of these into one place so you can search and find and see information. So in this webinar today, we're going to address the integration between Write Facts and M Files. But M Files out of the box can connect to any type of application that has an OLE or ODBC backend database, for which Write Facts is one of them, Oracle, SharePoint, Salesforce, and so forth. So, a little bit of background on enterprise content management and M files. So, M files, who are we? So, we help businesses manage information. So, I like to say instead of content management, we're information management because one of the biggest issues that organizations have today is they have structured and unstructured data in all these different applications and they don't have one central repository to pull all this information into. So what you end up having is to log into multiple systems to get an overall view of an account or something that's going on or accounting and things like that. So with M files, what we offer is a content management platform. And that's very important because we connect all these applications out of the box and here's one platform to see it, view it, and 
make reporting on the data. We're flexible and highly configurable. So one of the keys to our solution is that we integrate with Microsoft Windows out of the box. When we started about eight years ago, with the content management, we try to find that, that key underlining factor that most companies worked off of, and that was Microsoft Windows. So what we like to say is if your end user knows how to use Microsoft Office, then they automatically know how to use M-Files. We have a neat, unique focus, like I said, on information management, and we have a high user adoption rate because of our integration with Microsoft Windows. So with our solution, you're able to find, share, and secure documents and information quickly and easily. So the problem with most um, enterprise content management systems, well, if I were to talk to you, if anybody owned anything or has heard about it, I get a lot of eye rolling. Why? Because they're very complex to use. The user interface is not intuitive. There's a large learning curve. They very um, still have independent silos of information. Most content management solutions do not connect to third-party applications very easily. It takes a lot of um, services and consulting hours and scripts and things like that. And even in that, you don't get exactly what you're looking for. So you still have these independent silos. And last but not least is they're very IT-centric. So with content management, to set up a workflow or a simple workflow, you have to bug the IT department to do so. Um, if you wanted to manage document permissions, set permissions on it individually, once again, IT. If you wanted to share something with a contractor, bug IT. So they're very IT-centric, becomes a burden for the IT department and the user. And when you pull all of this together, if you look at the enterprise content management market, they have a very low user adoption rate. It's usually about 20%. So here's our solution with content management. We talked about the key, I think, to what we do is a truly simple interface. It's easy to use, it's very intuitive, and because we connect to Microsoft Windows right out of the box, uh, an end user is automatically familiar with M-Files. Once again, if they know Microsoft Windows and Office, it takes us about two hours to train your end user on how to use our product. Second is we decided that we wanted to be a product company and not a services company. So about eight years ago, how do we do that? How do we offer our customers an out-of-the-box solution that truly connects to third-party applications? What's the commonality? Well, OLE, ODBC backend database. Almost 95% of all applications on the market have that kind of backend database. Well, we decided if we design a product that can connect to that easily out of the box, then it solves that dilemma. Because what we wanted to create for our end customer is a centralized repository for all of their data and information, regardless of what system it lies in. Whether it be in WriteFax, Salesforce, an ERP system, we can pull in from all those applications so you can get that 30,000 foot view of all of your data. And then last but not least, we decided to give the control back to the end user. So we gave the end user the ability to create easy to follow workflows to then assign permissions by group, by individual, um, however they wanted to do that, and they could lock down a document. So HR has the ability to lock down a document, sales, and so forth, and only the people that should have access to it will. And when you bring this all together, M-Files has one of the highest user adoption rates on the market. Um, Forrester, um, the Wave Report, Deloitte and Touche, um, everybody talks about the ease of use of M-Files and that we have a 98% user adoption rate due to our integration with Microsoft Windows. So. Let's talk about dynamic content management. Why is that important? So we believe that a folder structure, which is what most people are still using today, so I bet if I were to pull the audience right now, I'd probably get about a 95% still using a folder structure. We believe that's as antiquated as having a filing cabinet in the corner of your office. If I take a document and I file it in that cabinet, chances are I can find that file again but I'm gonna have to know something about that file. How did I file it? Was it under the year that maybe the invoice was created or the customer that the invoice is associated with or the product? Or if I wanted to file it all four different ways, I'd have to make four copies and put it under each area. 
well, what if Jane in accounting walked into my office and I wasn't there and needed to go into that filing cabinet? They're going to have to know something about my means of filing it. So usually Jane will walk out and wait until I come back to my office. Same thing with a folder structure. You have to know something about where you saved it. So with M files, we go with a metadata or a tagging of information approach. So what does that mean? We care what type of document or data it is or object, such as what's the document type? Is it an invoice? Great. Who is the invoice associated with? What customer? So you can tag it with the customer. Maybe you want to put today's date on it, um, the permissions that are associated with that, and so forth. Once you do that, you get something we call dynamic content. You no longer have to search in a folder structure. You get that Google and steroids that Michelle was talking about experience. So with M files, picture this. If I told you that as a company, I could give you what looks like a Google bar with the same search capabilities that Google gives you, but it sits on top of all of your data. And now, no matter where the data lies, what application, you can do a quick Google search and find what you're looking for. That's dynamic content because we've now tagged it with metadata. And the second part is when you bring anything into the M files system with OCR, it's 100% content searchable. So you can search the content of it. So now we've created that dynamic content versus a folder system, which is static content, which remember what static websites and things like that, how antiquated it is. To kind of drive this point home a little bit better, we like to use an iPhone analogy. So let's pretend everybody out there, we all bought iPhones. So we're using our iPhone and we decided to download the latest song by Blake Shelton from iTunes. When you download that song from iTunes, where do you save it on your phone? The answer is you don't have to tell it to save it anywhere. Okay, great. Once you download it, all of a sudden that song pops up and it shows you that Blake Shelton's song is a country music song, so it shows up under country music genre. It shows up under Blake Shelton's latest album. Even though you may not even have other songs from his latest album, it now creates a new folder, what looks like a folder for that new album. It shows up under Blake Shelton as an artist, and so forth. How did it know to do that? The answer is that document was actually tagged with metadata or information. So when you pulled it onto your phone, it knew it was a country music song tag, that it was Blake Shelton, his latest album. Now if you think about this, if this was a folder structure on your phone, you would have to save that song four separate ways. That takes up a lot of memory space on your phone and you'd get frustrated. What you're actually seeing, instead of a folder structure, is a virtual view. The good news for the end user, it still kind of resembles and looks and feels like a folder structure. But what it actually is, is one copy of the song that populates under these virtual views. It, it meets a query. So now you can have one song, but it can show up multiple ways. That's the same thing with M files and metadata. You can have one document that can now show up under multiple views. That invoice can show up under the customer. It can show up under the product that it has to relate to. It can show up under the salesperson. So you can create these what looks like folders, but virtual views. So that's just a little bit of background on M files and content management. So now what you came here for, so let's talk about how M files and write facts work together. So, you receive a new fax document into WriteFax, and this is what the view within WriteFax. If you think about this, here's the date and time, here's the fax number, and maybe the page and the status. This is all metadata that we can tag the document or the fax with automatically when it came in, who the fax number, what the fax number it came in from, and so forth. So it already has metadata attached to it if you think about it. So then once it's received into WriteFax, we have an automatic connection that we can create to the M file solution. The fax is then routed to a UNC path, as you can see here. So M files is constantly monitoring that UNC path. And once it finds that a fax has come in, it looks at the UNC path and it can move the fax into M files automatically without you having to do it. 
Now, once again, we talked about that fax already kind of comes in with some metadata information, the timestamp, the date, the fax number, and so forth. So this is the M files, and then you can automatically see that it's moved in here because we're watching this path constantly every five seconds for new faxes that come in. So from here, if you want, if there's a workflow that needs to happen, it can trigger a workflow. Orders can be entered into the back office. Revenue can be recognized. So now, if, as you'll see, it's simple. Out of the box, we connect to write fax. It's easy to configure. Next integration will pass XML metadata from write fax into M files. And once in M files, all faxes and content of the fax are OCR'd. So they can be searched and found via metadata tag. So what does that mean to you guys? So now, because it already has the metadata somewhat associated with it when it comes in the system, you can search based on maybe the fax number or the date or the company. But also, once it's brought into M files because it's OCR'd, you can now search the content of the fax. So if there's key phrases or information, you can use that Google on steroids bar that we talked about, and it will go through all of the faxes that are in system and try to find a match. So now, this makes audits and searching an absolute breeze. So once again, it's kind of simple. Our integration is out of the box with write fax and we connect into there. It makes now you can archive and store your faxes. You can set a retention policy of two years, four years, six years. And then once it meets that policy, it can delete that fax, but it'll still keep a record, uh, an auditable record for compliance that shows that it met the standard that you set forth of two, four, six, or eight years when it was deleted, timestamp, and so forth. So that's kind of, I don't want to go too much into M files. I really wanted to get to show you guys what it looks like. So Josh, I think, is going to show you the integration between write facts and M files and what it looks like coming from the write facts system into M files and how you can search and find it. Thank you, Robin. At this time, I'll go ahead and move this over to Joshua. All right, Joshua. Uh, All can yours. you see my screen? Can you see my Looks background? Looks good. All right, sounds yes, good. Looks good. All right, what I'm going to focus on is that next generation she was talking about. So we actually are at the next generation stage already. That next generation is the XML generator, and we're going to look at how that works. So the old method is just going to a UNC path. We could just scan a document to OCR, but it was kind of too simplistic. So at this point, we can do considerably more, and that's what we want to look at at this point. So really kind of four elements here. We're going to look at how WriteFax ages and archives in the first place. We'll look a little bit at the XML generator, kind of what it is in the first place and how it comes. And that's a WriteFax feature. How the files actually get imported in the files. And then lastly, of course, how you find them. So the first thing we'll look at is the aging and archiving on WriteFax. Here's my WriteFax server. This is a 10.6 server. And basically, how this will normally work, if I just open up, and I'm not going to get to every little technical detail here, but I can choose the method in which I want to archive. In this example I'm going to be looking at, I'm really talking about um, just doing deletes. I'm just looking for archiving faxes. One of the biggest problems we've had for WriteFax for quite some time, actually, is WriteFax is not a document management, so you can only store so much content before it becomes a problem. So uh, what WriteFax needs to do, it has to do, it needs to archive its faxes eventually into some other system. Normally people will handle this by choosing to delete faxes over maybe half a year or 30 days, but that's not good if you have some type of compliance law that requires you six or seven years to keep your faxes. So what the biggest problems WriteFax has had is long-term storage, and on top of that, just finding something. The fax utility itself is a good tool for actually sorting and concurrent faxes, but if you ever try to find something that's really old, it takes a while. And so we want to look a little bit at how we can actually deal with this. So you see right here, I have this set up right now just for delete. So right now I just care about archiving. I could technically set this up to do anything. Anytime somebody sends something, anytime I receive something current, whenever it happens, to go ahead and put that into M files. But in this process, I'm just looking for delete. I control this by the group setting. So let me just go to a group. And you see there's an uh, aging and archiving. So typically you would set how many days you want to keep your fax before you purge it off of the right fax system. I have a little check mark down below that says once I purge it, go ahead and export it into the something the XML generator can handle. 
the XML generator is actually going to take out that stuff and move it into a folder for M files. So basically, I set it up per group, set up how many days I want to have it, whatever's appropriate for my system, and then make sure I just have that checked. And that's all I'm really doing on this side of it. So I'm going to take a look here at the XML generator. The XML generator is an add-in you put in through the EDC feature here. And what it really does, and you can see I can see it track as it tries to process or do anything and see how many jobs have passed through. But it takes whatever files I'm trying to export out and it exports it into whatever format I want it to be. Now I've chosen the exact format I want. I can structure this and break it down at any level I feel like. I can choose whatever tags and the right tags I'm looking for, whatever type of structure I want. What this will ultimately do is export, basically it'll scan a directory when it does archive and export into another folder. I have some samples here what those look like. You have your, your fax image itself. Here's um, actual metadata. I've chosen exactly which tags I would like that to care about in my fax. The unique IDs, when it was sent, how many pages the user involved. It's just an example here. I can choose whatever tags I really feel like. I can customize this in a deep level on my fax. I don't want to have to just go into a search bar and search kind of randomly for something because I may want to organize this in some kind of way I can see it easily through views. And this is really going to help me do that quite a bit. So I've got these basic tags here. Knowing these tags, I'll basically set up on the other side how this is processing. So fairly simple. So the XML generator is only job really is to export stuff out. I've also told the XML generator to export a text file of the history of the facts. So how many times it's been viewed, what, how many times it's attempted to send, whether it failed or worked, all this information I've got it captured. That's information here. And then, of course, you have the facts image itself. Pretty simple for this part. So let's actually see what it does. So importing of the facts into M files. Let me go into my M file server. What all I really do on this side is fairly simple on this side is I actually set up kind of a, just a, a connector here. I just tell it the director I want, and I tell it exactly which metadata I care about based on those XML tags I made. So I just tell it exactly what I want to bring in, how I want to map it so it knows how to search for all this. And I can tell how often I want to go. Here I have it every 900 seconds, so it's not constantly running. And I've also told it to do a searchable PDF. So when my tips come in, it'll scan those tips and turn them into PDFs that are searchable. So a fairly simple process here. But I actually scan in these documents. Now, it's hard for me to kind of do a live demo of it because it'll trigger on the right back side uh, when it actually starts bringing it in uh, based on the actual date I have set up for when I or age and purge stuff, which in my case is 9 a.m. So it's not really going to kick in here. But I already have a ton of packages into it. So let me actually go to the kind of the user side, what it would look like. When she was, uh, Robin was talking about integrating into Explorer here, you can kind of see it right inside of Windows. This makes its own little map. It's a fairly simple tool. I can open this up, and I can start searching for however I want to do it. In this case, I basically have a silo here of all this called archive faxes. I can either search by all faxes. I just go classes, say, bring up any fax, and there's a ton, ton of them here. And I can see the difference. So now, obviously, this is very difficult for me to search. I've chosen the name here. I've chosen to do it with the date and the unique ID. I can do any method I want to do how to write fax, whatever I want to call it. As long as it's easy for me to search, as long as it's not going to duplicate. If I click on one here, to this PDF, I can see the metadata it's captured over. And the fact header, I can go to preview, and it'll actually show me the image itself. And I can also see the text file associated, which is kind of the transmission record. And the metadata for that as well. Fairly simple here. So let me go back to this. And I'm going to see if I can search for it a little bit easier. So one method I could do is I could just do an open search. So say I'm looking for RF Connect, RefX Connect. It should bring up everything that has RefX Connect on it. Let me go ahead and click on one of these PDFs. See, it finds it, and it actually highlights it within the document itself. So it actually shows it and narrows it down. There's still quite a few documents here, but it actually shows me quite a bit. I could do other types of searches, like advanced searches if I like to. Say I want to do by a specific date. I'll say I'm looking for when something was sent on, let's say, July 2nd, to 2013. There it is. 
You know, it's pulling this information based off the metadata here. This is not what the old system would do. The old system would have to find it somewhere on the page that had a date. So this is actually based off the metadata that I brought in and chose to bring. So I can see whatever I'm bringing in. I can, of course, see the history of it. Very nice process. So it's really easy for me to search, really easy in there. Uh, the problem is I may not want to search. Maybe I have 30,000, 50,000, 70,000 faxes. And the last thing I'm going to do is search for a word and then pull up 40,000 of those and think somehow I'm going to find it. That could be very difficult, now, especially when I'm trying to find stuff. So you can create something called views. So here I've created a view. I had to say find faxes by date. What I've done is just set up a simple view here. Like if I double click it, it'll say what year. So say I'm looking for the same thing, um, July 2nd, 2013. 2013, 3rd July, there it is, same fax. I don't have to search for it, I don't do anything special for it, I can just find it, kind of get to my point here. But because I have all those metadata brought in, I can choose to make my own views and do whatever I want to. So I'll see if I can make one here, see if it'll work. I'll do my user. I'll add in some stuff. I'll say, well, maybe I just want to sort it by group. Then I want to sort it again by the user. And then I'll do the date. I'll say what format I want. I'll say the exact date. And I'll make one here. See, now here's my groups. Let's see if we'll open this up or not. And basically, you can tree this stuff out. See, there it goes my per user. So if I'm trying to actually search stuff by users, whoever sent it. I can break this out, and I can see the user sent it, the times they sent it, or the dates, and I actually see the faxes that are sent. Same type of process here, previewing, seeing it's in here. So if you've ever tried to search for something and write fax, this obviously, this is considerably quicker. Keep in mind, this is years of data. So I have a lot of information that's brought into this. So you can really see quite a bit of content. So you can just do searches. You can do advanced searches. You can do stuff there, but you can also organize it if you like to. Especially if you're used to an organizational structure, like a file folder structure, you can kind of choose how you want to build it out. So you can see it. You're just not bound to it, which is kind of a nice process for it. So we can see how we import it. We can see how we can locate it. So what we're seeing here is really kind of a revolutionary function for RightSax when it comes to actually archiving. So getting stuff off the system deals with our major problem of really stocked up faxes. So if it's been working process for a long time. And obviously locating faxes is an issue also as well. This makes it very easy to locate, very easy to find. You can actually control and lock it down quite a bit as, as you go further into like with permissions. Maybe you don't want users to be able to alter something, but maybe as an admin, I like to change the metadata or something. I could change something as an admin. Maybe I don't want my users to do that. I can block that out, that type of control. So it really gives you some control of the data it's brought into it, but more importantly, it lets you just find it. Kind of get to the point and see what you're really looking for. So that really kind of breaks down what we're trying to see as far as our, our tracking, how this goes. So like I said, the original process uh, was just going to a file folder, and then with OCR, and you have to search for it. But now, because we have the metadata that comes with the XML data, because of the XML generator, we can customize your views, we can customize how we can search for it, we can customize a tremendous amount, including exactly which tags it is that we're trying to bring into it. This kind of gives us the flexibility we're looking for, it kind of really gives us the ability to work ourselves through this. All right, I'm going to hand this back over to Michelle. Thank you very much, Joshua. And thank you also, Robin, for the detailed information. At this time, we will go ahead and open the line up to questions. I'm sorry, not the line. We will go ahead and offer you to post your questions at this time. And as I mentioned earlier, we'll get through as many as we can. Anything we do not get to, an account manager here at DM will follow up with you after the uh, webinar ends. If you're not sure who your account manager is and you have some additional questions after or you'd like to see pricing or what licensing is required to make this integration work, you can contact our direct line at 877-669-3700 or you can email info at dm.com and we will have your information routed accordingly. Thank you again very much for your time. We go ahead and offer you to post your questions. We do not have any questions yet. 
feel free to go ahead and ask away. We are here to answer any questions you have. I'll give it just a couple more minutes. It looks like Joshua and Robin did such a great job. We don't have any questions. All right. Well, we thank you again for joining. We will have the webinar posted to the YouTube site later this afternoon. And in the meantime, if you have any questions, feel free to, again, call your DM account manager or 877-669-3700. Thank you all and have a great day.